In addition to being the Emmy and Writers Guild award-winning creator and star of Atlanta, he's a best-selling, Grammy-winning recording artist. Please welcome superstar Childish Gambino, AKA Donald Glover. Hey, everybody. Appreciate this. This is, um, I'm gonna be real. I've never been here before, and this is wild. <laughs> you guys <laughs> don't have models giving you the awards. You guys got a dude who didn't even button up to the top. <laughs> He's like too scared. He's like, I, I just gotta give him an award. It's crazy. Um, what's up, Spike? Uh, Tony Kushner, you look just like uncut gems. Has anybody told you that? <laughs> okay, good. Hello, I'm Donald Glover. And um, I'm here to uh, present Paul Sims with the <laughs> Herb Sergeant um, Award for Comedy Excellence. And it's, uh, the award was named after Herb Sargent, a writer who worked on SNL and came up with the Weekend Update with Chevy Chase. And uh, Chevy Chase once called Herb one of the funniest writers uh, working in television. Um, and Chevy Chase once called me, you know what, this is about Paul. <laughs> it's an honor to represent the literal dozen people who love writing and laughing and creating with Paul Sims. <laughs> Paul's comedy life started where anyone would think an executive producer of a show about a black drug dealer in Georgia would start. Harvard University. <laughs> so many people told Paul, you're never gonna work in comedy. You go to Harvard. This is a serious school that will always be known for his academics and never be known as one of the fastest ways a cranky nerd can achieve their ultimate goal, human touch. But Paul kept writing. He wrote and he wrote until he found himself on Late Night with David Letterman, one of the most influential late night shows of all time. Then he was on The Larry Sanders Show, one of my favorites, one of the most influential sitcoms of all time. All these shows rip him off, my show included, and uh, which leads to his shining achievement, any writer's resume in his life, something great that everybody wants, his own show, news radio, working with brilliant comedic personalities such as Dave Foley, uh, Stephen Root, John Lovitz, Mara Tierney, Vicki Lewis, Condi Alexander, Phil Hartman, and future president Joe Rogan. <laughs> By the way, no one's giving Paul any credit for like doing a show with Andy Dick and Joe Rogan and seeing 20 more years, like living. <laughs> this guy should be, I've seen this dude eat a hot dog for lunch and then smoke a vape like a rude 16-year-old. He's, he should be dead. It's wild, he's alive. <laughs> News radio was a critical darling, but struggled to find an audience with only a minuscule 11 million people tuning in every week <laughs> and was canceled after 96 episodes. That is crazy <laughs> how times have changed. It, the Atlanta's premiere had eight people watching it. <laughs> yeah, um, it's, yeah. Uh, but, you know, from there he would go on, you know, and work on some of my favorites, uh, Flight of the Concords, <laughs> Bored to Death, Boardwalk Empire. I didn't even know that until I did the research. That's crazy wrote on that. And then Girls as well, which I loved. Um, and, Right around that time, I was on, I, I got asked to be on Girls, so I went on Girls. And uh, I was on the set of Girls after filming a sex scene for like eight hours, which they cut down to two minutes. I've never seen any of the rest of that footage, so. 
I asked Lena, I was like, you know, afterwards, I was like, hey, what made you decide to work with Paul? You know, and she goes, she goes, honestly, this nigga lets me do whatever I want. And I remember thinking two things. I was like, one, Lena is using the N-word extremely liberal with me. <laughs> Who does she think she is, Chevy Chase? <laughs> and two, <laughs> I don't know why Chevy's getting it tonight. Um, and two, that's the kind of producer I want, you know? Because when I was writing on 30 Rock, Tina and Robert, who are also recipients of this award, um, drilled into us that Hard work pays off, and even setups can be punchlines, and nothing comes easy in comedy. They felt like your comedy mom, and they care about you, and they want you to succeed because the world just isn't a safe place, and they want you to be ready. And Paul was kind of like your absentee comedy father. He's like, <laughs> he's actually a good guy, and, and you're mad he's not around because you miss him when he's gone, but when he's there, he's so much fun, you forget to be mad. <laughs> and he never freaked out about the changes in the script. He never tried to push his vision of the show on us. You know, he, he wanted what we wanted. And anytime we'd give, he'd give us a joke, it'd be like one of the funniest ones of the season. And like any good bad father, we craved his approval, <laughs> but also knew he really couldn't be bothered with our emotions. <laughs> You know, he, he doesn't care much, but he works hard. <laughs> I'm dead serious, but he works hard. And he always reminded us, like, it's just a show. You know, if you don't really live life, then you'll have nothing to write about. You know, which was real shit when we were young. Like, I was really excited about him. Like, Paul, you know, he's really calm and zen. His, his leadership style is like Phil Jackson's, his, you know, like, and just like Phil Jackson, he sat on the sidelines and collected awards off the work of some of the best black talent of a generation. <laughs> he went on to steal one of those black talents from my show, Stephanie Robinson, <laughs> who went on to work on What We Do in the Shadows, one of my favorite comedy shows. Very good, an award, you know, an award decorated and hilarious show about something Paul knows very well, sucking the life out of younger people to survive. <laughs> I'm gonna be real with y'all, I'm gonna be real with y'all. I love Paul, like Paul, he, he really is like a comedy dad. He never pressed me to do anything with the show. He was always there to listen. And he made things better just by being around. And one thing I learned with Tina was like, you know, you spend more time with the writers than you do with your family. So you should be able to stand them. And everybody, we, we loved being around him. And when Atlanta first started, I asked him, I was like, you know, do you think the show's gonna be successful? And he said, depends on what you call successful. And he, I said, what is success to you? He said, any show that's on the air that you would watch. And I let that be my guiding principle on Atlanta, and it got me here. Forced to say nice things about a man I barely know <laughs> in, in, bun, in front of a bunch of nerds who mostly know me as Lando. <laughs> Paul, I love you. Thank you so much for everything you've done for me and everything you've done for the comedy community for over 30 years. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Paul Sims. Um, wow. Donald, thank you. That was great. Um, and thank you for Atlanta. That was not only one of the best shows I've ever been involved in, but um, the easiest job I have ever had. It was mainly just reading drafts and saying, yeah, this looks really good. And uh, looking at a rough cut and saying, yeah, this looks really good. Um, every once in a while, though, I would get a call from the network saying, uh, we've got the new script and we sort of have a problem with the scene where 
They have Mickey Mouse aggressively and explicitly anally penetrating one of the stars of one of our other current series. <laughs> and then I'd call Donald and go, hey, uh, quick question for you. Um, the network's having a little bit of a problem with the Mickey Mouse BFing scene. And then Donald would just laugh and go, nah, we just put that in there to mess with the network. <laughs> it doesn't have to be Mickey Mouse. It can be Donald Duck. Any of that will work fine. Um, so thank you. I would like to thank the Writers Guild for giving me this award and for everything they do for all of us. Um, and that includes not just the current organization, but everyone, the writers and organizers over the past, how many years? Over 75 years that have fought and sacrificed to make sure that we all get paid fairly and treated correctly. Um, I need to thank my wife, Beth, of course, <laughs> for the family she's given me and everything she does for us. Ever since we met, Beth has reminded me that if I have to give an awards acceptance speech, I better not forget her. <laughs> but then it turns out, over the last 14 years, I haven't actually been called upon to give many awards acceptance speeches. <laughs> Lots of nominations, just no wins. Um, I think she's starting to think that I'm intentionally losing awards just so that I don't have to thank her. But tonight's a huge relief. Beth, thank you, and I love you very much. Um, I'd also like to thank my children, Violet and Charlie, who are here tonight. The only thing I don't like about my job is when it requires me to be away from you two. Uh -oh. And while we're... While we're saluting each other's achievements tonight, let's take a moment to recognize the fact that last week, Charlie got a 100% on his history quiz. <laughs> Hang on. And Violet got her highest score of the year so far on a math test. Um, my agent, Michael Rosenfeld, is here also. Michael became my agent in 1990, and he is the, uh, this is something that I am inordinately proud of, and I don't know why. He's the only agent I've ever had. Um, since we met, it's been the two of us, um, and it seems like it's too late to make any big changes now. Uh, <laughs> most of my conversations with Michael over the years have been me calling him and saying, this job is fucking impossible, I can't take it anymore. And then he says, you know what, you're right, fuck these idiots, that's it, I'm pulling you out of this show, you're done. <laughs> and then I go, all right, just take it easy, take it easy, it's not that bad. You know, don't, don't do anything crazy, let's just see how next week goes. Um, I also, if there's one person I wish could be here tonight who's no longer with us, it's, it's my old friend Brad Gray, who taught me a lot about... Uh, when everything is falling apart, sometimes the best thing to do is go home, hug your kids, and just go to sleep because you can deal with it all the next day. Um, speaking of people about whom Michael might have said, fuck these idiots, <coughs> I've worked with many network executives over the years. <laughs> and tonight I'm just going to recognize the ones who were really good. The late Jamie Tarzis, Casey Boys and Amy Gravit at HBO, and at FX, John Landgraf, Eric Schreier, Nick Brad, Kate Lambert, Jonathan Frank, Mong Chan, Samantha Militante, and Barbara Crawford. I, they're not here, so I don't have to say this, but they really are some of the best people I've worked with. Um, I'd like to thank previous Herb Sargent winner uh, Steve O'Donnell and David Letterman for hiring me for my first TV job at Late Night in 1990. Uh, that... Getting hired at late night, I, I don't think it makes any sense to anyone who's not my age, but that was an accomplishment that seemed so far beyond what I ever thought I could achieve that still to this day, everything I've done after that job just seems like icing on the cake. Um, Charlie, can you bring me a glass of water? Or Violet, one of you, I'm not joking, thank you. Um, just come up, I'll keep talking, yeah, there we go. Thank you. Um, uh, I wouldn't be here tonight without all the great writers I've worked with. And hanging out with writers, especially when we're talking about anything but the actual work at hand, 
is my favorite thing. It's my favorite part of this job. News radio ended over 20 years ago, and my writers from that show are still my closest friends. Uh, some of them are here tonight. Josh Lieb, who's nominated for the Charlemagne Show. Um, Sam Johnson, who you saw in the video, who works with me on Shadows. And Julie Bean, who couldn't actually be here because she's uh, doing a pilot up in uh, Toronto. But she's been at my side in one way or another since 1991. Uh, it's remarkable to me that so late in my career, I've had the opportunity to work on a show as silly and stupid and enjoyable as what we do in the shadows. It's the most fun group of writers I've worked with since news radio, and I believe they were instrumental in me getting this award. And they're all here tonight. Merica, I'm, I'm definitely gonna forget someone and you can all bust my balls about it tomorrow. Merica, Sarah, Sam, William, Shana, Zach, Jake, Max, Rajat, Jeremy, Lauren, Samantha, Wally, and of course, Stephanie, who's no longer with us, but she's not dead. She's just off <laughs> do, making movies and doing a pilot. Um, oh, I've worked with so many fantastic actors over the years, but since tonight's event is not televised and there's nobody here but us writers, I thought I'd take this opportunity to say to all the actors out there on behalf of all of us writers, you're welcome. Um, it's like, yes, yes, you ad-libbed a great variation on the joke we wrote. Now, why don't you come upstairs and ad-lib the stories of the remaining nine scripts, including <laughs> solid season arcs for each of the characters. Um, all right, one last, this is one last thing. When it uh, came to writing my remarks for tonight, I asked the Shadows writers to help me out. And uh, don't worry, I paid them each double what I'm getting paid for this speech right now. <laughs> but to make it more exciting, we decided that they would write what I should say but they did it when I was out of the office and that I should have no preview of what they wrote. And then they put their remarks in this sealed envelope. So I'll be hearing all this for the first time. It's an experiment, but I think it's gonna go great. All right. To my darling Beth, oh Jesus. To my darling Beth, you are my cozy bunny. You are a cutie patootie. To fall asleep in your arms is the honor of my life. My whole body tingles when we kiss. You guys are, your womanly touch, your magnetic smile, your lovey-dovey goo-goo-gaga, you make me want to boogie-woogie. Kissy-kissy, my missy. All right, thank you. This is a classic, Baba Booey. All right. Um, dear Paul, this is free work during a strike year. Good luck, motherfucker. Very nice. Someone says, I just prop dusted table 69. <laughs> there are so many incredible writers here tonight, I wish I could shake all of your hands. Paul, leave the stage and shake 30 people's hands. <laughs> like that, like that. This is, this is, all right, this is obviously a story idea for the show. Nandor gets a motorcycle. <laughs> Marnie gets a motorcycle, that's left over from girls. Herb Sargent, more like Herb Suckett. Paul Sims bows to no man. <laughs> uh, Kale, Kale Caesar, no croutons, side of potatoes. That's a lunch order. I am so grateful for this award. It's an amazing accomplishment for someone like me, a, band, a man born with a tiny heart. Oh, and penis, thank you, very nice. Haven't been paid yet, good. <laughs> Did I mention I attended Harvard University class of 87, 88? It bears repeating, thank you. There's another uh, grocery list. Harvard, more like Fartvard, thank you. <laughs> to my past and present, bright and charming as hell assistants, where would I be without you? Like physically, where do I need to go and win? I need it in my eye, Cal, help me. I need the time and place. <laughs> Yale number one. Now that I've become a man, please congregate in the center of the room to lift me high in the chair, okay? <laughs> this one is a drawing. I'm glad most of you except the front row can't see it. Um, I, all, I owe it all to marijuana, puff, puff, pass, weed rocks. That is absolutely not true, and that's a violation of everything I believe in. I hate marijuana. 
I never wrote for The Simpsons, which is fine. Who cares about Homer, Bart, Mr. Burns, or Lisa? I certainly don't. <laughs> We're almost done here. Um, here is the exact amount of money I made off news radio. And then in parentheses it says, Paul, say the number, don't be a bitch. Thanks to my agent, Michael Rosenfeld, AKA Zaddy. I love you, Zaddy. <laughs> oh, fuck. Hi, I'm Paul Sims, and here are 10 reasons you should tune in for the upcoming reboot of HBO's Divorce. <laughs> this one is just, th this is stage direction. It says, uh, uh, oh no, I can't remember the joke. It was not actually, never mind. Um, oh no, I remember the joke. It was uh, do a Bud Dwyer. That's a, it's, okay. it's, it's a historical reference. Um, my work is ultimately a meditation on grief. <laughs> Last two. I always say the writer's room is like my family, which is why tonight I, Paul R. Sims, Harvard 8788, do hereby bestow um, unlimited use of and access to my beach home to the staff of what we do in the shadows. Again, unlimited under the eyes of the law forever. Um, Violet and Charlie, it's the last one. I'm sorry for all the late nights, but I do it for you, and now you owe me. Thank you very much for this, everyone.